A pyramid is formed by taking a two-dimensional base, like this quadrilateral here, and then joining lines from each of the corners of this shape to a point above the base, like this. It doesn't matter what shape the base is as long as it's a polygon, so it could be a triangle like this, or even a hexagon like this. All of these are examples of pyramids. In your exam, you'll almost certainly come across a square base pyramid though. And in this video, we're going to learn how to find the volume and surface area of one. Now, good news if your exam board is AQA. They state that the formula for the volume and surface area of a sphere, cone, and pyramid will be given in the relevant question. So you don't need to memorize these formulas. However, this is not the case with other exam boards, so you may need to learn this formula. The formula for the volume of a pyramid is one third multiplied by the base area multiplied by the perpendicular height, where the base area is just the area of the base, and the perpendicular height is the vertical distance from the top of the pyramid all the way down to the base, so that it forms a right angle with the base. You shouldn't confuse this length here as a height because it's not perpendicular, it's on a slope. So let's take a pyramid and add some dimensions and work out its volume. So we'll use the formula, the volume equals one third multiplied by the area of the base, and for this one the base is a square, which is six by six, so its area must be six times six. And then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which for this one we can see is five, so multiplied by five. So we just need to work this calculation out. Now this one could actually be on a non-calculator paper. So we'd start by saying the volume equals, and then we can multiply one third by six by finding one third of six. And you do this by dividing six by three. Six divided by three is two. So this part here is two, and then we need to multiply by six and then five. Two times six is 12, and 12 multiplied by five is 60. So the volume would be 60. The units of volume are something cubed, and since the lengths are measured in centimetres, it would be centimetres cubed. Let's try a second example. So for this one, we have a square base once again, with length 6.5, and this perpendicular height is 11. This time you would be allowed a calculator. So using the formula, the volume equals 1 third multiplied by the base area, so the area of this square here, 6.5 times 6.5, and then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is this 11. So multiplied by 11. So now you would just take your calculator and type this in exactly as it's written here. That would give you this number. And let's say the question said to round it to one decimal place. So it'd be 154.9 centimeters cubed. Here are two pyramids for you to try and find the volume of. I'll put the formula in the top right for you. And for the second one, I'm going to say it's non-calculator. So for the answers then, for the first pyramid, we would do volume equals one third multiplied by the base area. So this area here, 13 times 13, and then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 11. So multiplied by 11. This one we can type into the calculator and we'll get this answer here. And it says to give it to one decimal place. So it'll be 619.7 centimeters cubed. For the second one, we would do volume equals one third multiplied by the base area, so 5 times 5 this time, then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 9, so times 9. Now this one is non-calculator, which you might find a bit strange at first, especially if you try to do 1 third multiplied by 5. That's not going to give us an integer answer, because 5 isn't in the 3 times table. But since we just have lots of multiplications here, we can change the order, and actually do 1 third times 9 first. 9 is in the 3 times table, so to find 1 third of it, you just divide 9 by 3, which is 3. So this part would be volume equals three, and then multiplied by five, multiplied by five. Three times five is 15, and that multiplied by five is 75. So the answer is 75 centimeters cubed. Now, sometimes we get trickier questions where we need to work backwards. Take this pyramid here, and the question could say the volume of the pyramid is 320 centimeters cubed. Work out H, the perpendicular height of the pyramid. So this time we've been told the volume and we need to work out one of the missing lengths. Let's imagine we were going to calculate the volume. We would start by saying one third multiplied by the base area, so 10 times 10. And then we would normally multiply by the perpendicular height, but we don't have that, it's called h. So we'll just write multiplied by h. But we do know the answer to this calculation. We're told the volume of the pyramid in the question is 320. So this must equal 320. Now we just have an equation to solve. 
If we start by multiplying 10 and 10 together, well that's 100. So we have 1 third multiplied by 100 multiplied by h, which is a third multiplied by 100h, which we could write as 100h over 3. So we end up with this equation. Here you can multiply both sides by 3. On the left hand side, the 3s will cancel, so we just have 100h. And on the right hand side, 320 multiplied by 3 is 960. Then you can divide both sides by 100. 100h divided by 100 is just 1h. And 960 divided by 100 is 9.6. So h is 9.6, and the units would be centimeters. Let's have a look at another question with this sort of style. So we have a different pyramid this time, and notice we're missing L. We're told the volume once again, but this time it's 735, and we need to work out L, which is the length of the side of the square base. So let's once again imagine we were finding the volume. We would do one third multiplied by the base area, but this time the base is a square of length L, so L times L. And then we would multiply this by the perpendicular height, which we do know, that's 20. And this must equal the volume given in the question, 735. Here we can multiply L and L, which will give you L squared. So we have 1 third multiplied by L squared multiplied by 20. We can change the order of multiplications around, so 1 third multiplied by 20 multiplied by L squared, which is 1 third multiplied by 20 L squared, or 20 L squared over 3. So now we're going to solve this equation. Just like in the previous question, we'll begin by multiplying by 3. On the left hand side, the 3s will cancel, so we have 20L squared, and on the right hand side, 735 multiplied by 3 is 2205. Then we would divide both sides by 20, that will cancel the 20 on the left hand side, so we just have L squared, and on the right hand side, 2205 divided by 20 is 110.25. Now, this isn't the value of L, this is L squared. So we need to square root both sides of the equation. If you square root L squared, you get L. And if you square root 110.25, you'll get 10.5. So the answer to this question is L is 10.5 centimeters. Now let's have a look at surface area. The surface area of a pyramid would be the total area of all of the faces. A square base pyramid has five faces. We have the square on the bottom, this triangular face, this triangular face, this one, and this one here. So we have one square face and four triangular faces. To find the surface area, we need the area of all of these. Let's add some dimensions to this shape. Let's say the length for the square base is 16 centimeters, and normally we would draw on the perpendicular height if we were finding the volume. But this is actually not needed for the surface area. Instead, we need the length for the side that goes from the top of the pyramid down to the midpoint of the base of the triangle. So like this. Let's say for this one, that length is 17 centimeters. That will actually be the same length on all four of those triangular faces. So this would also be 17. So would this, and so would this. As long as those lines go to the middle of the base of the triangle. So to find the surface area, we'll start with the area of this square base. The area of the square base is just 16 times 16, or 256. Now we'll take a look at this triangular face here. To find the area of a triangle, you do 1 half, multiplied by its base, so 16, multiplied by its perpendicular height, which is 17. And this will give you 136. So the area of that triangular face is 136. But this triangular face is actually the same size. And so is this one, and so is this one. So we could just take this area of 136 and multiply it by 4 to get the total area of all four of the triangular faces, which would be 544. So we could then take the area of the square base, 256, and add to this the area of all four of those triangles, which was 544. This will give you a total surface area of 800. The units will be centimeters squared this time because we're talking about an area. Let's try a second example. So for this pyramid here, we'll start with the area of the square base, which will be 3.2 multiplied by 3.2, which gives you 10.24. Then we'll look at one of the triangular faces. The area of the triangle will be 1 half multiplied by the base, so 3.2 multiplied by the perpendicular height, 6.5. And this will give you 10.4. Since there are four of these triangles, we'll take 10.4 and multiply it by 4, 
which will give you 41.6. We can then add the area of the square base 10.24 and the area of all four triangles 41.6, and this will give you the total surface area of 51.84 centimeters squared. Here are two more pyramids for you to work out the surface area. For the first one, we'll start with the square base, so 6 times 6, which is 36. Then we'll do one of the triangles, which is 1 half, multiplied by the base, which is 6, multiplied by the height, which is 5. And if you work this out, you end up with 15. Since there are four of those triangles, we'll multiply the 15 by 4, which is 60. Then if we add the 36 from the square base to the 60, which is the four triangles, we get a total of 96 centimeters squared. For the second one, we'll start with the square base once again, 14 times 14, which is 196. Then we'll look at one of the triangular faces, 1 half, multiplied by 14, multiplied by 20. And this gives you 140. There are four of those, so we'll multiply 140 by 4, which will give you 560. And then we'll add the area of the square base, 196, and the area of all four triangles, 560, which will give you a total of 756. And now let's have a look at one final pyramid. This pyramid is a little bit different. Its base is no longer a square, but a rectangle. Let's have a look at how this affects our calculations for the volume and surface area. We'll begin with the volume. The formula for the volume still applies. One third multiplied by the base area multiplied by the perpendicular height. So we would do volume equals one third multiplied by the base area. And the base is a rectangle this time, which is 50 by 22, so its area is 50 multiplied by 22. And then we multiply by the perpendicular height, which is 60. If you work this out on the calculator, you'll get the answer 22,000 centimeters cubed. So for the volume, there's no major change. We just need to do the area of a rectangle for the base rather than the area of a square. Let's have a look at surface area. So for the surface area, we don't need the perpendicular height but we do need the lengths from the top of the pyramid to the middle of the sides of the base. So this length here, and also this length here. And notice they're different this time because those triangular faces are not the same size. We'll start with the area of the rectangular base, which is 50 times 22, which gives you 1,100. Then we'll look at this triangular face here. This is one half multiplied by the base, 22, multiplied by its height, 65. And this will give you 715. The triangular face that's opposite this one is also the same size, but the other two faces are not the same. So we only have two of these red triangles, so we'll multiply 715 by 2, which will give you 1430. So now let's look at the other two triangular faces. We'll do this one here, which is 1 half multiplied by its base 50 multiplied by its height 61, and that gives you 1525. But that triangular face is the same as the one at the back of the pyramid here. So we'll also double this number, so 1525 multiplied by 2, which is 3050. So we now have the area of the rectangular base, 1100, the two triangular faces at the sides, so 1430, and the triangular faces at the front and the back, 3050. So if we add all of this together, we get the answer 5580, which would be the total surface area. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.